Okay, I could see why I was confused. So both of these players are going to be confused as well because this is Mega Random, and they've both started off with six villagers here. We've got Jose Ivan Conseco, I think that's how you say that, uh, playing here in the red, 630 ELO, playing as one of my favorite all-time civilizations in Spanish. Um, Jose did forget to make houses, but Jose's probably not used to having to rush the houses down quite this quickly because, again, they started with six villagers. So we've got Jose up against uh, Jnar, and Jnar is playing as the Vietnamese. Jnar did start off with the houses there. Good work. And the map is mega random. So you, know, you never know what you're going to get from this map, but this generation seems to be kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, Mediterranean or Baltic, where you've had a lot of water in the middle. Uh, the only difference is that you have the shallows here so you actually could bring the ships all the way to the edge of the map so in theory i mean this could be really good for spanish in the long run with their cannon galleons if they had cannon galleons all along the shoreline but obviously other aspects of the map are going to matter seems like there's a lot of gold on this map uh just looking at yellow side we've got uh 27 tiles that's a lot of gold to work with Twenty-two thousand, and then there's even a decent amount of stone spread out throughout the map as well uh, two relics a piece on both sides, and then obviously most of the wood is towards the edge of the map. But we're going to relax here, and we're going to see what these players are up to. Look at Red. Red is placing the houses along the front of the base right now. Are we going to get another one? We're not going to get another one, and that's probably good for Red because Red really needs a mill. All right. There's actually not a lot of berries in this map, but this is the low elo build order. If I were to make a build order around what I've seen in lower elos. You would have four houses, mill, and then you would chop the straggler trees for wood. This is the classic build. Uh, also, of course, all the geese, all the sheep would die at once. That's a very important aspect of this build order. This goose has survived for now. But remember, it's really hard to know. And I, I'm actually ashamed of some of my old casts, like from three years ago. I did not do a good job of understanding the average player i've tried to improve ever since of course but like it's very hard to know that there's animal decay on this right that's such a difficult thing people look at it and they say oh this goose is 100 food i'm gonna get that 100 food whether i eat it with one villager or six but that's not actually the case you do lose out on some food it can be wasted uh, with the way decay works and then it's very hard to think like why would i need a lumber camp man i've got trees next to my my tc Lumber efficiency isn't really that important in Red's mind. Also, and you know what? We're going to leave it on, too. Or leave it off, I guess, at this point. Also, you have to remember that it's very possible these guys have big trees. And sometimes you just want to clear the trees out of the way because they get in the way and are annoying. What is Red scouted here? Okay, Red's scouting the back corner right now. Uh, there's actually no boars on this map. Which is going to make the berries, uh, the deer, all those things very important. So, be curious to see what these two do. So, I'm very impressed so far. They both have less than 30 seconds of DC idle time, which for 630 ELO is a, bit, a little bit surprising. I'm going to assume we're not going to see a dock in many fishing ships. I'm going to make a more accurate prediction, actually, that we will see a dock in fishing ships, but only after they reach Feudal Age. And we've got the perfect mining camp. Let's go. The mining camp all low elo players love. Right between two goals. And it's actually not hugely inefficient either. Um, now, if you were to make a mining camp like here, which some people might be tempted to do, yes, you could take both golds at the same time. But, uh, you know, that's a bit more walking. Or like even here, that would be a bit awkward. We'll see what happens. One villager on each side, too. Oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> that's so satisfying. So the other day, I loaded up my game. And I didn't have my mods enabled. Because every time they do an update or whatever, the, uh, the mods get removed. Anyways. And so I played with big trees for about an hour. It was horrible. Uh, but it always reminds me how difficult it is have efficient wood lines 
when your villagers are positioned like this? Like, how are you supposed to click the proper tree if you really want to space up your villagers? It's like, it's basically impossible. So I, I don't think it's something that these players really look for, but if they were to look for it, it obviously wouldn't be easy, right? Okay, some geese are coming back to the TC. Good job from Red to get the deer. Blue is also taking some as well. And Blue's on the way to Feudal already. And Blue also added fishing ships. And Blue's found some geese. So ge Blue is killing it right now. Also, a nice bonus of having the Vietnamese is you know exactly where your opponent's town center is. Do you think Red intentionally faced the houses the same way? Because you can do that if you hit the hotkey more than once. Something that the devs probably will never fix because it shouldn't be a big priority for them, but something that SimCity players want them to fix is the fact that if you set the houses up like this in Dark Age that are all facing the same way, sometimes the orientation switches in Feudal. So the orientation, excuse me. So what that means is like, it might be facing different directions even though you've put in all the work for them to face the same directions in Dark Age. That doesn't bother me. Mm, apparently, Red hates mills. Red's like, I already have one mill. Why would I make more? And apparently, Red hates berries. So not having a mill here to drop off the food here from the deer, and then not having more villagers on berries is pretty much the difference between being feudal age and not. Um, Vietnamese don't have to spend wood on their eco upgrades, which is an epic bonus. I love that. And we'll now see a barracks from blue. And these villagers have given up on their gold job. And they're going back to gold now. Never mind. They weighed their options. The other jobs in the city. And said we prefer the gold. Thank you. These villagers. Being a little lazy. But the deer might walk right into their path. And okay. There we go. They're going to eat that deer as well. Blue scouting is pretty good so far. Red scout is on the way, and red scouting is also really good. All right. <laughs> you have to delete, you have to rebuild the houses. Yeah. Again, the way the houses are positioned, I mean, not these, but like, let's see if all of these have the doors facing to the left. Because these three and then these three look the same. It could just be chance. Uh, he's not going to be able to finish all of these before hitting Feudal Age. Um, let's see if this one... If this one's facing the same way, I'm sold. Okay, never mind. It was just a chance. Oh, God. Town Bell here from Red. As Blue Scout wandered too close to the TC. And, all right. So, you see what I mean? Look, the houses look different, man. Does that not bother anyone else? That bothers me. I'm not even a SimCity player. What happened? The, the original construction was so different. Okay. Uh, wood upgrade. Wheelbarrow here for Jose. Jose would love to see you make a mill here. But Jose is going to actually make a stable. And an archery range. And a blacksmith and a market. Jose's like, we got houses and lines. We've got our gold. We've got our stone. We now need our buildings. There's the blacksmith. Where's the market? I think this villager... Yeah! Let's go, Jose! Let's go! Jose's like, every building I need in this game is gonna be right here. Now that... Thankfully, with Spanish, you do build a little bit faster, so that's nice. Oh, Blue, don't make army! What is this? This isn't a war game. 17-minute fast castle making archers. Ugh. I think blue is going to win. <laughs> I could be wrong, but like... <laughs> blue is a completely different caliber player. Red hasn't made any farms. Red has no defense. Oh, wait. The farms are going to start here. Red's dropped off the food at the mill. And is probably going to farm soon. We'll see if blue actually attacks, right? Obviously, that's an important aspect of this. Uh, fishing ships. I've just been collecting shore fish, by the way, which is slower than deep fish, but it is still an, 
exactly. A couple extra eco units. And resources collected so far. Yep, blue has the lead. I think the important thing is that food right now. Food and gold. Most important resources at this stage. Blue's even made a fire galley. I actually think it's really bad for red that those archers didn't hit the scout. Because I think the alarm bell going off would be good for red, so red could make some towers. Um, red's made a dock, though. And that's cool. Okay, Spanish are insane if you get to, like, mid to late game with them. Very good civilization, but they don't have any eco bonuses. 1750 fast castle. What Blue did a great job of here was took all the extra deer and added some fish. But still, that's really impressive. Like, I think that's the fastest 600 fast castle I've seen. Now, does Blue know what to do with it? Can Blue also get crossbowmen and bodkin arrow and go attack? I don't think so. Blue's just going to drop a town center. And so Blue's going to wait. Just chill. Red's food eco is really not looking great. Red seems very active with the scout, though, I've noticed. This is all manual scouting. I mean, Blue still should have a really good economy lead, so... Even with blue not attacking, things are fine. Red's going to take even more gold. That's good. I wonder if red will maybe buy some food. How many mining camps does red have? One, two, three, four, five. I was wondering why red had no wood for farms. Should you put 500 wood into farms to go to Castle Age? Or should you put 500 wood into mining camps... Just in case blue doesn't kill you, so you have some of the extra risky golds for later. Oh, red's going to catch up. Because the farms are starting to come out now. But Also, as we see fishing ships from red. Um, you know, the five villagers on stone and, and the six on gold. Like These, these are all villagers that could have brought in hundreds of food already. And those are the things that tend to make a big difference right now. If I'm red, I see that fast castle time, and then 10 crossbows show up to my base, I just GG and go next. Yeah, of course. If the crossbows show up to red's base, you just resign. Like, this game, if blue were to move out, is over right now. It might not be over if blue doesn't move out, and blue is never aggressive with this army. Keep in mind, blue still got a scout, though he is hiding. He's scared of the enemy. We know it, right? We can say, hey... Just get upgrades, and you're good to go here. Does Blue know it? And now let's see Red's reaction. I could see Red making, like, 20 towers. <laughs> if Red realizes what killed that. And crossbowman upgrade now for Blue. Okay. We're chilling. We're relaxing. Having a great day, I hope. Red's starting to fish a little bit, which is obviously quite nice. There's one tower, there's two towers, there's three towers, there's four towers, there's five towers. Did I call it? Or did I call it? <laughs> oh, classic. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Red saw archers, and Red's like, well, this is why I went to stone. And here comes blue, so it's the correct decision. If he didn't make any towers, he would be in a real pickle. So let's see if red goes up to castle age now. Now the good news for red, and this is what's kind of funny, is like red's been on stone for so long that red can afford to do the towers and then make it to castle age and then can still drop a castle. Let's see what blue does upon seeing the tower. Now you can sit underneath the tower, no problem here, blue. Just sit underneath it, you'll kill the villagers, it's fine. Okay, got attacked by that one. And it's just like, well, let's be sneaky. Let's go to the next area. Let's attack this guy. Let's kill, let's kill, let's kill. Oh, it's a war game. Kill innocent villagers and like it. Oh, let's go. Here I go. Town bell's been rung. Everyone in the whole town's been called. And now Blue's like, holy crap. That's a lot of towers. Wow, okay. So Blue has now seen three towers. And Blue's probably a little frustrated by that. 
Everyone in the town is allowed to go back to work. You guys already know. You probably shouldn't ring the bell, because then all the villagers that weren't even in harm's way hop into the TC. But you got to ring the bell because it's a lazy man's game. It's a lazy man's game, this Age of Empires. We just click the bell. Oh, my God. Jose. Stop it. Don't you dare do it again. He's trying to scare Blue off with the sound of the bell, I'm pretty sure. And finally, he's like, well, actually, I could just move those two villagers. And then the rest of my town can continue to work. All right, that was a lot of dinging. Let's see what Jose does in Castle Age now. Only eight eco behind. And we're going to see a castle here. And that's going to go up so fast. That's going to go up faster than he can ring the bell again. All right. Good old town bell action. Blue is making navy, so Blue's like, hey, you know, he told me about navy. But Blue's probably not looking at this right now. Blue's like, ah, oh, yeah, let's kill those houses. Hurrah! And I don't know where Red's villagers are going. Hey, guys. Oh, my God, they're distraction. Okay. Is Red going to go imp? Why is Red running this way with the villagers? Red could actually go Imperial Age with these resources. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be really good, actually. I mean, Blue could bring the Navy in as well. It'll probably alert Blue to this, yes. But, okay. Uh, still, the villagers are just underneath the town. See, what the problem is, guys, You, a lot of people think that you shouldn't ring the bell because it's inefficient for your economy, but that's actually wrong. The real reason you don't ring the bell is because your villagers get accustomed to what it's like in the shade. They never have any visors. They never get any sunglasses. They never get any suntan lotion. These guys are just walking cancer sticks, basically. And they got inside, and they're like, oh, my God, it's so refreshing in here. They didn't have air conditioning back then, of course. So, like, shade was like, you know, today's AC. Anyways, we're going to have some army now from Jose. I'm, I'm kind of on Team Jose here. But also, like, Team Blue, because Blue has also played like a beast. These villagers also are trying to get back in so they can get some shade. And there goes Jose on the way to the Imperial Age with the new town center. And Red has zero blacksmith upgrades. So does Jose. But if you're talking zero blacksmith upgrades, Conquistadors and Knights are going to be the way to go. Now, not against the fire ships. Fire ships are far too strong, but against the crossbows, certainly. Imperial Age also can be really nice as it unlocks some different technologies and oh my god Thank you blue for leaving. I never want to hear this town bell again <laughs> Now this would be a great time to shout out a video that I made on TC tips it talks about different things you can do with your town center to help you ah to help you in Age of Empires 2 it talks about, I think, six different things you can do. It makes life a lot easier for you and makes it easier for you to play the game. Now, in Jose's case, I really, I think Jose is at a wonderful state, which I'm jealous of, where Jose just doesn't care. Like, if I were to sit down with Jose and say, hey, that's really inefficient for your entire economy, and it's pretty loud, can you stop doing that? Jose would say, uh, no, I know it's inefficient for my economy. But it's just easier for me because I can just click a button and I don't have to worry about it. And then I'd sit there and say, well, okay, live your life, I guess. Like, do what you want to do. By the way, Blue, there's a certain age that you could advance to that would be very helpful. That'd be the Imperial Age. Blue has so many resources right now. And you got to love this elo, right? Blue seemed like the mastermind that was going to dominate and win this game. And don't get me wrong, Blue still has an amazing lead. But Blue hasn't researched a single blacksmith upgrade. Blue hasn't clicked up to the Imperial Age. And Blue's probably like, what? I was in Castle Age at 17 minutes. This guy didn't hit Castle Age till 26. How am I losing right now? The problem for Blue is actually Blue doesn't have the second building. So I actually think there's a very good chance that Blue clicked Imp. And it just didn't work. Because you need two Castle Age buildings. So like a siege workshop and a monastery, university, any of those work. Or you need a castle. Just one single castle, which is what Red did. Um, 
Red's also making a missionary. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Red's also trying to wall this. Which is awkward because you can't wall on this terrain. Now, here's a proposal that I brought up before. I want to hear your thoughts on it, guys. I think that Spanish missionaries should be able to pick up relics. However, once the relic is picked up... Oh, God. This is... Hold on. Hold, hold the, the phone on that conversation. Blue's trying to secure this extra stone with this castle, but has no army here to protect it, and that castle gets denied. The knights and the conquistadors could even fight the ships off as well. But, yeah. I think Spanish missionaries should be able to pick up relics. However, they should move really slow when they're holding the relic. What do you think about that? Because competitively, we never see missionaries because they lack range compared to a monk and they can't pick up relics. If they could pick up relics, but they were really slow, like the, the speed of a monk when they were walking back with the relic, I think it'd be interesting. And then we would see, like, from a competitive standpoint, we would see missionaries a lot more. And I think it would get really interesting. And I don't think, as long as they're not moving fast with the relic, I don't think it makes them super strong. Now, I proposed that quite a few times. I think they might actually do it. We'll see. Look at this guy. He's jealous. He can't pick up a relic. Which is weird, too, because the missionaries kind of look younger, to be honest. They look younger and they look stronger. Why can't they pick up the relics? They should be able to pick up the relics. Anyways, castle was denied. Blue lost the stone or deleted it. I should have paid attention to that, but Blue's going to drop one here now. Blue still hasn't clicked up to the Imperial Age. But Blue, that definitely like lit a fire under Blue because now Blue's like, oh man, we need everything. So Blue's going to send elephants. Blue's going to get some scouts over there. Blue also did make a round of blacksmith upgrades. All right. So, the missionary's healing now. He's not preaching, he's healing. That's good. And the good news for Red is that Conquistadors and Knights have pretty high base stats. Because Red isn't getting any upgrades either. Also, now this monk is over here. I think he forgot where his monastery is. Oh, man. Red's apparently a big fan of me. Jose, when you rewatch this, I'm sorry about the bells. Well played. I'm on Team Jose right now. Lots of farms. Okay. And the Conquistadors are shooting down the Navy. Mm. I like how Red said, great idea. I'm going to take this stone now. <laughs> like, Red was like, man, is that stone important. And actually, you know what I think it is, guys? I'd have to go back and check from Dark Age. But I think these are two neutral stones that ended up next to each other. One was supposed to be on this side, and one was supposed to be on this side. Maybe I'm wrong, though, because this stone exists. But, like... There's two there. Now I'm interested. Anyways, it's essentially a neutral resource, you could call it. And finally, Blue's on the way to the Imperial Age. And Blue also sells a bunch of wood for gold right now. 58 villagers versus 78. Red has not really attacked Blue's economy the entire game. But somehow the eco KD is 9 to 4. Oh, it was because of the castle, of course. Hmm... IT90, hi chat. Long time since me and my husband have joined live. Let's go. Well, welcome, welcome. Is that paper money? Oh, it's Chatras. Okay, that makes the elephants even chonkier. This is what a normal elephant looks like. And this is what an elephant with more HP looks like. Boom! Wait, they get plus 100 HP? Is that what that tech actually does? 250 to 350? Why did I think it was just plus 50? I know that the uh, I know that the elephants get 420 HP when they're lead. Plus 100 HP? Can you tell me how much Chadraz is? I didn't realize that. I know. Again, I knew the final stats, but I didn't realize the tech did that much. Dude, that's insane. Like, I think that's way too much <laughs> from a balance perspective, but it just never becomes an issue. Competitively, so it'll probably never be changed. Holy crap! 
That's ins that's wild, man. I don't care how much armor you have. You can't stop that. If you have a semi-competent player with 15 to 20 elephants with 350 HP and a couple trebs, good luck stopping it. It's 250 food and 250 gold? What? That's so much value. Holy crap. Well, they really... I know they buffed it before. They really want to see more use out of that then. Vietnamese are low... Like... They fly under people's radar, but... Community games have shown me how sick they are. I'm worried for Red. Red's not getting Black. Well, Red is getting Blacksmith upgrades. Red's getting a full round. And now Blue is really unhappy about that mining camp. Let's see how much damage the Kongs do to these things. If anything was going to kill them, it would be Conquistadors. Okay, well, Blue, you probably should actually attack the units. Hmm. Okay. There's obviously a big HP difference in the armies here. And Blue just kind of clicked everything in here. Red just kind of chilling out. The missionaries trying to heal. There's just no way you compete with that much HP. Great job from Blue. Who further cements in my mind that he's the favorite to win this game. Better economy. Better army. Better pizza. Papa John. No, sorry. Uh, w one too many advertisements this weekend for me as I was watching some football. <laughs> um... Pikeman now on the way, so I guess Jose's scared about the elephants. But tricky, obviously, when there's crossbows out there as well, right? Wow, that was pre-Bloodlines, too. Yeah, these things are wild. I like what Blue's thinking here. I think Blue's gonna drop a castle. Mm, also, love how Red has a relic right there and might be able to make the journey home. Red still getting a lot of time to build up towards some army and does still have lots of resources as well. Which football team do you watch? I'm a Vikings fan. So I was losing my mind. I just had way too much caffeine and then I saw the Vikings Bills game and I was, I, I, I couldn't control myself, man. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was insane. Um, from the missed calls, from the ref point of view, from like, the mistakes on both sides. It was probably the best football game I've ever seen in my life. And, uh... I, I mean, it was certainly the most emotional game I've ever watched. Even though it was just a regular season game. Gotta love how Blue made some cannon galleons. That's smart. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, my team at the moment. I thought you were a Manchester United fan. Well, we're talking American football, but I'm also a Manchester United fan, yes. Red's going to have some big problems. Blue has all the momentum. The Rats and Archers are a great unit to have. Like the Crossbowmen in general, which is so important against the Halbs. And again, you don't have that many Elephants. And it's still 2,400 HP. And the push just continues from Blue. And Blue can also continue to do this. Make Trebs, drop a castle, and then start Trebbing from underneath that castle. I think Jose's a player that needs a lot more time. And I just don't think that Blue's going to allow that. Who's going to win the World Cup? Great question. I have no clue. Um, yeah, it's a very tricky one. I'm going to watch what I can. Obviously, <clears throat> I'm sure many of you guys feel the same. A little bit conflicted because of the host country and all that stuff. I also watched the documentary. This game is unfortunately over, uh, unlike FIFA and whatnot. Uh, from like you know, there I th it it mainly covered like the '80s up to like the mid 2010s before like some of the FIFA regime left and and I think some of them were arrested and all that. So uh, very conflicted with this World Cup and all that. But I think I still will watch some of it, and uh, we'll be juggling my streams around some of the games that I want to watch. Anyway, sorry this game wasn't a bit closer. I was still hoping that Jose could come back. Jose just kept ringing that bell, man. And uh, it it was not the biggest problem for Jose. The biggest problem was honestly the castle each time. But Blue's a beast. Blue at a 1751 castle time. That was impressive.
and collected a lot more in this game, and then also went for a crazy composition. Those elephants, 370 HP on a non-elite unit. What in the world, man? Like, if you have the time with Vietnamese, going for elephant, rats, and archer, how in the world are you supposed to stop that in 1v1? Like, I think the only way that gets stopped is civs that have siege on her. That's the weakness for Vietnamese late game, is, like, Mongol or Celt siege on But beyond that, it's crazy.